Hello. Good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Syed Suraya, convener of Five Day Faculty Development Program on recent innovations and technologies in electric vehicles. Welcome you all for the second day session. On behalf of Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering, Gates Institute of Technology, I thank each and every one for your positive response for day one's session. I hope you all you all had an interesting and knowledgeable session on day one on electric vehicle subsystem and charging by Dr. Ritesh Kumar Keshri. It was an excellent research topic as mentioned by our chief guest, Professor Vijay Kumar Sir, Registrar of JNTU Anantapur. And I hope all of us get new research ideas by the end of this Friday FDP. Now it's time to kickstart our today's session. I take this pride to introduce a experienced, eminent, proficient pers personality, Mr. P. Chowreddy, founder and director of Interleaved Multidisciplinary Research Center in Charlaparli, Hyderabad. He submitted his doctoral research at Shivaji University, Kolhapur. His area of research is fuzzy logic. To his credit, he has nine international conferences on different kinds of technologies and six papers in international journals in a span of three months. He has a versatile 21 years of experience in designing of products in the fields of industrial automation, power electronics, renewable energy, embedded systems, digital electronics, instrumentation, and automobile electronics. Apart from industrial exposure, he has rendered services as Dean R&D, internships, placements, and forming a bridge between industry and auto, uh, industry and educational institutes. His innovative thoughts and developments are adopted and visible across the country in the market. To list a few prominent references, electronic steering for cars, auto gear shift, diesel engine governor, data communication through telephone line, solar tracking system, high capacity SMPS modular power supplies, high capacity UPS and inverters, etc. His recent development goes into implementation of sign approach approximation formula of Bhaskara 1 of 6th century into a microcontroller to develop sine wave for UPS. Presently, he is working on a unique model of audio compression in a Vedic way. This would replace MP3 audio format with its compression ratio and bettering audio quality. Uh, audio quality. I wish good luck, sir, uh, to get through this. I welcome Mr. Chaurati Garu to take over session and enlighten us with his experience. Thank you, sir. Session is all yours. Yes, I'm starting. Good morning, all. Uh, let me introduce myself to a bit uh, more. I've started after having an experience of uh, 21 years as development uh, engineer uh, and having an exposure in uh, linking industry as well as uh, institution. I call it eye to eye contact. I stands for industry, another I stands for institute. I call it eye to eye contact. So this was possible and uh, it has given good results. With this, it has opened a third eye to form a company which uh, which renders services to both the uh, uh, sectors of the uh, thing, like uh, industry as well as institution. And that is how usually, generally, what happens is uh, uh, people start with a company producing some product and or a college or, an, or a university uh, which educates. It, it, needs, it needs a bridge between these two. So to, to bridge between these two, I formed it as a research center. So research center is rendering services to both, in both ways. So I called it interleaved multidisciplinary research center. So let me introduce my company, what are the operations of my company, and then uh, get into the subject which I'm here for. Okay. 
So we are here for uh, uh, peeping into what uh, the trends in uh, electric vehicles as well as uh, the hybrid vehicles have taken shape all these years. We are uh, going to talk about a uh, few parts of the history where electric vehicles have initiated their uh, life or germinated uh, from the days. Uh, it has uh, it has been it has been running in the minds of people to have an alternative transport system. Uh, it has been years now. Like uh, when we come to electric vehicles, it is aged back to the days where fuel-driven or electric vehicles where to be introduced. Both were in the tussle to come into the market, to come onto the roads. But always, electric vehicles have suffered the problem that they are facing even today. The first crude electric vehicle was made in 1832. It was using DC motors permanent magnet DC motor. It did well, but to only concept level. It was just an experimental basis. It could not hit the market. It could not ride uh, people on the roads because from 1832, people have been doing uh, different models, different techniques in making EVs. Whatever they did, it was with permanent magnet DC motor, which was carrying brush, which used to wear out and abruptly stop on the roads. The hit on the, on the brush was so drastic that uh, it could stop on the, on the way itself, on the go itself. It was a big teething problem. That's why it could not prove itself into the hearts of people. Moreover, the fuel driven vehicles could do well in multiple applications. Like example, 
for agriculture, for uh, general right, official uh, official purposes, and uh, even terrain applications where mountain riding was necessary in few in few places. But the electric vehicles, because of its magnetic limitations, DC motors could not drive beyond a limit. Moreover, battery charging was another big aspect where it could not be charged on the go. There wasn't, there wasn't any uh, system which could charge the vehicle, charge the vehicle batteries on the go or it did not have refueling stations. Fuel driven vehicles uh, survived only because of an extra service provided uh, by, the, by the manufacturers. And that is the reason in 1920, a decline started to electric vehicles. The decline existed till 1935. What happened in 1935? Not the, not the better part of it. it. EVs disappeared because gasoline vehicles, fuel driven vehicles were doing very well, powerful and huge vehicles were also launched. They could do well in all types of roads, road conditions, climatic conditions, as well as refueling was easily possible. Refueling was established across the world. Refueling was very easy. It could take a few minutes to uh, fill the tank. EVs Till then also suffered with brush problem. They could, they could not prove themselves robust because of carbon wear out, carbon brush wear out. So the electric vehicles called themselves concept vehicles. In this thing, I've been right from my childhood, I've been hearing about electric vehicles. This is my personal experience that electrical, I used to hear the same sentence that we are using today, the recent trends. Right from the day I, have, I heard it during my uh, childhood days, it was called recent trends in electric vehicles. Even today, we are calling it recent trends in electric vehicles. In 1996, I was in Pune. Uh, I was doing my PG and uh, got an opportunity. I had a desire to work on electric vehicle, make an electric vehicle. So, was uh, searching for a low cost second hand or worn out vehicle, which I could pick up and then make one uh, electric run vehicle out of it. Fortunately, I got one. I designed the uh, drive for it. It was once again, I had to pick up PMDC motor, the same limitation that the electric vehicle has been Seeing all those years, I could not overcome that problem, brush wear out problem. It sustained in that. It was just to satisfy myself. I picked up a 48 volts DC motor uh, powering 6000 watt. It was powerful enough to carry four people in it. 
it had an excellent terrain track. I could experiment it to, since Pune is a uh, hilly area, mountainous area, I could uh, test it to run on hills. It did well, but it had that old problem, frequent rush wear out. What was the vehicle I had used? You can see that. A village jeep. An old village jeep. By its structure itself, by its engineering itself, it was a sturdy vehicle used for military applications. In fact, it was for it was a uh, general purpose vehicle. It could be used for military, general purpose, and agriculture, anywhere, anywhere. So had the desire to convert willies to run on battery. I was satisfied, but the project was not complete because it had problems of frequent brush wear out. Moreover, Another teething problem was, we'll come to that problem a bit later. From 1994 to 2001, Reva made its uh, first Indian electric car. During 94, I used to hear about it, and then I used to hear about it as well as read in the newspaper that Reva is making the electric car. Once again, it was a hearing. I could only hear, hear about it, read about it. I wanted to have a look into it, but it was taking time. It was started by one gentleman, Chaitan Maini, a US return with a desire to make electric cars for India as well as China. Just imagine in 94 when he desired to make a car for China, what was the condition of China? It was definitely backward country as India is even till date, right? So it did not, China did not have good technology for them. They depended on India during those days. So Chaitan Maini started his first car, a plastic body, sorry, ABS plastic body. looked very small, two door, and could take two adults and two children. It, it was powered with AC three-phase motor, 4,000 watt, and 48 volts lead acid battery. So obviously the weight of the vehicle was high, Efficiency was low since it used three-phase motor. Then in 2001, Mahindra took over Reva, called it Mahindra Reva. The shape changed, the look changed, the weight changed, the motor changed. It came to VLDC motor. BLDC motor was first heard in a vehicle in Reva. It was in 2001, 2002. It carried the same 4,000 watt, 48 volts lithium ion battery. All this shot up the vehicle's cost much higher than the basic Maruti 800 vehicle. When Maruti 800 was costing two lakh twenty thousand to two lakh seventy thousand, this was costing three lakh eighty thousand rupees. 
for the seating capacity, for the comfort, for the range it can go, for the limited range it can go is 80 kilometers. Refueling is difficult. The cost is high. The sales of these vehicles was so low, it still remained the concept vehicle. It could not, it could not kick its, its nickname, concept vehicle. Again, a saga started in motor. In uh, presenting the motor to the companies, to the startups, it was hub motor. Hub motor really changed the scenario of electric vehicles because motor was fixed right in the wheel itself. It did not occupy a space in the vehicle. The weight of the vehicle reduced drastically. And that was BLDC hub motor. Introduction of these things, these motors, obviously by China, attracted Indian market to Indian companies to get it, fit it, and drive the vehicle into the market. This motor gave birth to electric scooters, electric small bikes. And once again, it had the same problem of recharging on the go. It did well, the companies did well because of over uh, publicization of the uh, you know the concept of hub motor the concept of uh, compactness lightweight people purchased it commercially the market commercially the companies did well but never imagined it could decline because of its nickname concept. Companies started producing the BLDC drivers. It, it was called the BLDC motor controller. The first launch of such vehicles two wheelers. They were cute, light, and usable by ladies. Because it could be recharged at home, taken, taken to office, come back, recharge it. No fuel, it only, it only used to give miles, no fuel. Calon was the company which started, Calon was one of the companies which started these vehicles. It started off with Electra 2.5. This vehicle was called mm -hmm. Electra 2.5. I worked with this company, made this uh, to some extent, and uh, it was in 2009, they rolled out their electric vehicles, electric scooters. They were powered with 600 watt BLDC motor, a 48 volts 20 AH gel battery bank, which gave 50 kilometers mileage. It could carry surprisingly two adults and a child. It was really a good vehicle uh, for ladies to go to office and come back or even sometimes for small visits, maybe some you know, market, general utilities of ladies. It failed to 
uh, attract gents because of its size, power, and the range mainly. The two years, the first two years of the purchase, it was really a smiley uh, usage of this vehicle. After the second year, the batteries drained out and I had to change the battery set, which cost, when the vehicle was costing around 40,000 rupees, battery was costing 11,000 rupees. 11,000 rupees after two years was really pocket robbing uh, figure. It almost came to near to almost the petrol vehicle running an year. So what is the fun in having electric vehicle? It's almost same as petrol, uh, I mean, in the running of uh, the cost, cost wise, running cost wise, but lesser in everything. Power is less, utility is less, range is less, no charge, no refuel up on the go. Once again, another uh, concept came out because of BLDC motor. Now it was a motor, not a hub motor. A differential fixed with D, uh, BLDC motor and a controller for it. This thing used to uh, used to give uh, a torque of 1200 kg carrying capacity. This was applicable for auto rickshaws. The 1000 watt motor gave an RPM of uh, 600 to the uh, hubs, wheels. This has given birth to uh, electric auto rickshaws, the commercial auto rickshaws. China released such vehicles, they called it e-rickshaw, the passenger. It looked nice. It did well. It carried seven people at a time, but it had a very big problem. The forks used to break because of the weight. Sometimes when it is climbing a hill, it used to lift off. Front wheel used to lift off because of more weight on the back. The engineering was not that good. You can see the picture itself. It's light in the front and heavy at the back. Just because of this mistake in engineering, the things turned very bad to the uh, manufacturers. But still, Delhi companies used to assemble few thousands and marketed across the country. Its sister came across, called it a carry. This also did well to some extent with the same problems that uh, that uh, usual electric vehicle was suffering. Usual problems that uh, electric auto rickshaw was carrying. The port brake, lift off, these were the problems. So since it was continuous teething problem of recharge, it was Calon company which, which started thinking of paid charging stations, which are already existing in China. They were for the two wheelers. So something of that sort was to be designed. 
they called it uh, it was it was called as fast charger fast charging is supplying of more current to the battery to charge recharge in short time but that was hazardous it could damage the battery or reduce the life of battery so some other uh, uh, methods came out and said rapid charging rapid charging was once again able to charge the battery in charge the battery to 80% or nearly 70% to 80% but it could still damage the battery it was uh, in this aspect i gave small thought to give a relief to the battery while charging give a stubborn pulse of high current once and release that using a negative charge a short negative then the battery survives it gets relieved from the stress that it has taken because of the heavy pulse this could do some a uh, better job and it was launched in the market within a small area of uh, uh, the manufacturing unit by the time this was launched the decline of electric vehicles sales of electric vehicles electric uh, two wheelers had come into the market because of that the charger could not go Uh, deep into the market or even the vendors another concept was solar electric vehicle charging station this was exclusively planned for auto rickshaws because auto rickshaws have a route they uh, they are parked for a while for their turn to come as well as or for the when they are in queue something of that uh, conditions during their in halt condition solar shades were provided where it can get charged within that time maybe it cannot charge the battery fully but it could do to some extent it could give a mile more obviously this was paid charging station that was still uh, year 2012 and after that there wasn't any much development in electric vehicles because of the same problems that Uh, we are talking about now petrol vehicles diesel vehicles they were doing very well battery problems existed battery uh, lead acid battery or gel battery was heavy in weight maintenance was uh, uh, difficult so with all these things survival of uh, two wheeler or uh, four wheeler or three wheeler was difficult the small companies which took up this uh, manufacturing of uh, electric evs could not sustain for longer period without any sales in the vehicles it's recent years where big companies are rolling out their vehicles such as mahindra e verito this is a commercial vehicle launched as a commercial vehicle used uh, in the city once again it cannot do well in uh, highways because of its own limitations of recharging uh, charge on the go then uh, battery replacement so such conditions 
are holding the performance of uh, electric vehicle. Another one is MG, EV, Hyundai, Tata. We, we already know Mahindra, uh, Reva, Nexon. So these are the vehicles which are launched. What is the fate of these vehicles? They have launched. They have not done more than one year. What is the condition after two years or five years? Once again, the question comes to change the battery. There, it eats up almost the cost of fuel. What is fun? Once again, the, what is the fun in having an EV? Running cost has not reduced. The problems in EVs. Replacement of battery after two to four years. It's heavy cost. Mileage limited to 50 kilometers. Or some, some batteries, some vehicles claim to around 200 kilometers or 400 kilometers, 800 kilometers, but that's the limit. And after that limit, there is no rate charge of the vehicle. It has to stand for at least six hours. Cost per battery set goes, or goes at par with the fuel run vehicle over a period of two to four years. The concentration of uh, the electric vehicles changed to some extent. This is a concept which I got during uh, 2011 again after 96. During 96, I could not work on small vehicle. I had to do it on village jeep. That day, during the, that time, I had an opportunity to work on uh, small vehicles, that is Maruti 800, because by 2010-2011, Maruti 800 uh, cheap vehicles were available uh, in the in the uh, sheds. So what we did is picked up a motor which was around uh, uh, 6,000 watt VLDC motor. Block head of the of the engine was removed. Gearbox was intact, coupled the motor to uh, clutch assembly and uh, gearbox intact. When the motor was run with BLDC controller, it started performing much better than the auto rickshaw because of its extra power, 6,000 watt. It could gear where the auto rickshaw doesn't have gear changing facility. This vehicle had gear changing facility. The rest all remained same without an AC. I did not work on AC to this extent, but uh, I could run it for few kilometers. Once again, the same problem of battery changing after a duration. Second is recharge of the vehicle. But overall cost of the vehicle came down because the uh, vehicle was second hand one. So the body was a second hand one. And it could do, it could, it could give a second life to the body. Where the engine could not do, the motor could do it. Motor could extend its life. So it, it did to some extent well, but with those limitations again. <clears throat> Another thought of having a hub motor in the front for the scooters. Like example is uh, <coughs> a Splendor, here on the Splendor. Front wheel is just running, uh, it's a drag. So that if I put a BLDC motor, 
it could do some extent that is i can operate the vehicle in electric or petrol as well as electric which could stand to parallel hybrid probably it's it's a known thing that uh, people use uh, two types of methods that is two types of things series hybrid and parallel hybrid so this is a method which is going to series uh, parallel hybrid <coughs> the hub motor uh, in the front wheel the controller controller designed to operate as a front wheel because front wheel should not be a drive for the two wheeler <coughs> it can only be a assist vehicle it can only assist the power accordingly it was uh, designed the controller was designed a regenerative braking was adopted in it so that while vehicle is in compression mode it is shifting into neutral and regenerative action takes place where it charges the battery that inertia put back as regenerative energy will give another mile similarly after uh after a long work on uh, four wheelers the hub motor for four wheeler was designed that is any front wheel drive vehicle carries the rear wheels just as a drive so since <coughs> since it's only a drag i gave a thought saying that it can be powered designed a hub motor to suit to that uh, hub and it was 6000 watt or uh, nearly 6000 watt each coming up to 1200 watt uh, when clubbed together both the uh, both the wheels clubbed together this used to push the vehicle it had the option of running the vehicle on two wheels that is uh, two rear wheels on hub motor that is when battery is fully charged and it can drive for some kilometers for this battery was a small one and engine used to carry the vehicle but battery was uh, installed to take the charge from the wheels as a regenerative braking system <coughs> once again the controller was designed exclusively for this to give a push that is if if uh, uh, if uh, the engine is running the vehicle at say 30 km speed then the motor used to push it to reach to 30.5 km speed that is it used to lessen the burden of engine lessen the uh, 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 wheels to drag the <coughs> vehicle this uh, it gave an increase in mileage the observation was it could shoot up by 8 kilometers per liter so this was a big advantage and i i could i, I could even call it a small technology overall what what are we doing here are we traveling towards hybrid electric vehicles the uh front wheel hub motor the rear wheel hub motor is it is it resulting to be a hybrid electric vehicles i think true the two wheeler electric hub motor in the front wheels four wheeler electric hub motor in the rear wheels yes it is constituting to that 
This has reminded the 1901 first electric vehicle, which was laughed around during those days. Because it was experimented with a petrol engine, petrol vehicle uh, with DC motor, uh, permanent magnet DC motor in the wheels. This could do well, but once again, the same problem of brush. It could not sustain in the market or could not even enter into the market. It died as a concept vehicle. This has indicated, yes, we are traveling towards that. Collecting all these things, Toyota made its first hybrid electric car with motor built into the engine itself. We are struggling to make, we are struggling to convert an existing vehicle uh, to convert, to put, to put motors in the wheels to uh, accommodate the space. So many aspects we are trying to do and uh, nothing is working out that uh, effectively. So the first vehicle that they launched was they were they successfully launched. It did very well, good mileage. They called it Prius, a luxury car, did very well. But what has happened? It had to survive as a celebrity vehicle because of its high cost. During 2000, it used to cost 24 lakh. It was heavy for a common man or a rich man to do it. So this still exists, but with only celebrities. With all these things, do we stop? With all these things, do we stop or wait for the technologies to arrive? Here we see parallel hybrid and series hybrid. What is parallel hybrid? I'll just brief it out. I may not go deep into it because we know what is parallel hybrid and what is series hybrid. Fuel drives, combustion engine drives the wheels. Motor also drives the wheels. This is parallel hybrid. Series hybrid is engine uh, generates power, stores energy as well as uh, drives the electric motor. Motor drives the wheels. So this is uh, a series uh, hybrid system. <laughs> we have series hybrid and we have parallel hybrid. Fine. Is it possible that anything beyond this is possible? It is, it is my own thought that I developed a system which can carry both the things. Yes, it is possible to do something else. Series and parallel in one thing. I called it a redundant system. Why redundant? <coughs> when it is series, it is running in series. And I, a need arises where it has to be parallel. I remove that, connect parallel. While running, I unplug and plug is redundant system. So I could convert on the go series to parallel, parallel to series. That means it exists. It has an engine. Combustion engine is running. Along with the engine, I drive a motor, electric motor. 
to go in series with it or to go in parallel with it <coughs> how could i do it a typical front wheel drive system has so you can see drive shafts just try to understand where the drive shafts are uh, uh, there are two drive shafts running to the wheels two wheels and reaching very near to the <coughs> gearbox gearbox is not shown in the figure but the area between these two uh, uh, drive shafts is for gearbox so drive shaft arrangement in the front wheels how it looks like so the orange rods are drive shafts with blue color boots uh, boots are cover for the thing where where the joint sits and it is oiled uh, so that dust doesn't damage the coupling there the gearbox sits which is which drives the wheels so what we are here to do motor is coupled to the front wheel drive uh, front wheel <coughs> drive shaft of vehicle how do we do it we have the drive shaft and the motor motor is double shafted one shaft is uh, uh, plugged into drive shaft the other end of uh, uh, motor shaft E is plugged into gearbox. So what has happened? The shaft, motor shaft, is working as drive shaft, a, con a, a continuation of drive shaft, a linking of drive shaft to the gearbox. And that shaft, new shaft, is powered by motor. Now you can imagine. when i put the vehicle in neutral the gearbox cannot drive the wheels during that condition motor when it is turned on drives the motor, drives the wheels similar uh, coupling is made on the other drive shaft also now while engine is running the wheels when i turn on the motor it is a parallel uh, hybrid system earlier it has when it when the vehicle was in neutral it was series hybrid when it is connected uh, with the engine the drive that is when the engine is in uh, when the gearbox is in drive that is beyond a neutral 1 2 3 4 5 any gear it is in uh, it is in uh, drive mode that is it goes into parallel hybrid how do we do it i called it smart redundant electronic energy delivery electric vehicle interface that means this is not a vehicle which i am trying to design it is an interface system which goes as which goes to any fuel driven vehicle i called it smart redundant electronic energy delivery electric vehicle interface and there is a poetry in this what is s r e e d e v i it is sridevi it's my wife's name so when i got this idea of uh, having redundant system in a vehicle i wanted to give it a good name this was the name i could uh, pick up uh, as a expansion from uh, my wife's name the spelling and named it as uh, smart redundant uh, electronic energy delivery uh, electric vehicle interface it looks like this so you can see front wheels a motor coupling drive shaft motor coupling and that is fixed to gearbox and the same thing the other side <coughs> engine 
power uh, to deliver energy into ba drive battery and another battery at the regenerative regenerative bank rear wheel hub motors which work as drive as well as regenerative any energy generated by these uh, hub motors or drive shaft motors is delivered into a regenerative battery which is used by the vehicle or uh, drive a since i'm working on fuzzy logic for my uh, completion of a phd uh, i've used a fuzzy logic controller to deliver uh logics to the motors to go into series mode parallel mode or regenerative parallel series or only uh, only engine drive or only motor drive <coughs> so all the four conditions are possible using this fuzzy logic controller depending on the terrain condition all the switching switching from uh engine drive to engine drive then selection of engine drive the series parallel or uh, motor drive all this is done with pre defined logics set in the fuzzy logic controller and automatically happens we the driver never knows whether it is in which mode that is in one of these four modes overall functioning of this brings in high efficiency in fuel consumption see we are trying to go in for fuel consumption only because my target here is not no, to go for electric vehicle and go in for the same teething problems of battery wear out battery replacement recharging again into the same phase and we are suffering instead i went with the thought saying that if i give a boost to mileage and power in the vehicle that will serve some purpose say so today if a vehicle is giving around 20 km mileage and if it starts giving 30 km mileage that's an achievement with a simple interface if it's able to give it it's an achievement so is my thought and then implemented on uh, uh, these things i have written a paper on this one of the six papers that i have published is this one how it looks like uh, how it looks uh, as a series hev mode as i said the gearbox in neutral mode in neutral then <coughs> motor is driving the wheels engine is uh, running to charge the battery battery power is taken by the motor so it complete completes the power drive as <coughs> series hybrid now the parallel uh, hev mode <coughs> in any gear in any drive gear the motor also is operated to assist the engine engine power is monitored continuously by fuzzy logic controller and motor runs to the extent that engine gets relieved from its stress so say when 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 engine is delivering say 1 hp of power the motor will relieve it to some extent that is maybe uh it will will give, will allow uh, the engine to deliver 0.8 hp or 0.7 hp the rest of the power taken by the motor this kind of uh, thing is done by the in 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 the in the parallel tv whereas when it is in pure electric mode that comes during uh neutral The, the the vehicle is put into the gearbox is put into neutral then motors are driven to the extent that 
the engine when it reaches the the vehicle when it reaches to top gear level then it shifts to top gear <coughs> so first second third fourth gears consume heavy fuel that is relieved by the time it reaches to top gear the battery bank would not have it's a short period would not have drained to any extent which will be recharged again during the running uh, when brakes are operated or inertia is uh, cut down uh, decompression is uh, required during those conditions it is it is uh, topped up the battery is topped up now advantages of uh, hybrid hev mileage is unaffected as age of battery increases as we have seen earlier in electric vehicles today when i purchase the vehicle it gives 50 km mileage and after 2 years it comes down to 20 so it's it's not reliable one uh, that problem does not exist in uh, hybrid hevs <coughs> battery is smaller and does not affect mileage of vehicle and the third one is cost of battery is very low because size of the battery is small after 2 to 4 years even if it is replaced it just it just cost some some uh, pocket money <coughs> uh i'll come to some proposals maybe future projects few are implemented but uh, few are to be implemented maybe we can take up these projects for uh, students uh, in the college <coughs> let me tell you the requirement of this proposal it's an electric bus it's a school bus maybe college bus also it's a electric bus made of three phase motor my proposal was for uh, 30 hp three phase motor with a vfd battery bank so battery bank is of say 600 volts battery bank drives the vfd see vfd is a simple thing uh, in in vfd uh, there is uh, the inverter stack it has three phase entry rectifier then it goes for uh, uh, conversion into uh, uh, vfd that is frequency variation is possible here we have used a frequency variation variability to change the speed of the vehicle to change the speed of the motor in turn it changes the speed of vehicle <clears throat> now why this was uh, 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 proposed <coughs> for a school or a college the bus starts its journey in the morning picks up the students reaches back to the school lies down there itself till the college is over or school is over maybe at 4 or 5 so it has ample 6 hours of uh, solar day during the solar day it can be recharged and again it can go for a ride that is evening it goes by evening it is the battery set is fully charged and it can go for a drive drop the students come back and settle again in the morning it takes the same uh, route comes back settles then gets charged so per charge of 6 hours it takes two drives this is one time investment this is one time investment and it goes for uh, years to so recharge run and solar solar energy is almost free of cost so it's a 
an option it's an option uh, uh, giving free running cost <coughs> so a shelter for electric uh, school bus so this is the model which at proposed bus uh, reaches the shelter then leaves the shelter six hours charging all this is possible here and you can have you can employ some other vehicles also for uh, recharging shelter is in here required solar shelter serves the purpose yeah uh, let's say till till now we have talked about uh, 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 road transport now if i mention this in this uh, platform may not be suitable but in my opinion it's a it's a journey to be made on electric so uh, this is this is a proposal that i am talking but to some extent this is already implemented in in applications of ponds agriculture ponds that is a boat bldc motor driven uh aquaculture boats this is used for feeding the fish in the ponds uh then catching the fish it can carry it can carry four persons or one person and uh, the feed it, or it can carry one person and debris uh, collection also fish uh, uh fish catching also a multiple application boat <clears throat> another proposal this is uh, this is no longer a proposal but it is implemented you know very well these uh, aerators they consume a lot of energy moreover they lack uh, sometimes uh, uh, power uh, three phase power and uh, most uh, most of the conditions there is a uh, uh, loss of fish or uh, prawns in the pond because of because this doesn't work during power cuts so had designed one using a bldc motor and uh, operated it on solar as well as battery and it could run on uh, uh, mains electricity that is uh, ev running on eb running on uh, solar battery and dg set so any of these options it runs and it operated uh, 100% efficient than any other uh, uh, induction motor this is just a concept uh, thing and it was used it is not a vehicle but because of launch of uh, the bldc motor a shape of uh, this product was changed so it has it has that bldc motor has served a purpose here now mm, i would like to take you to a tour to rap motors which is manufacturing electric auto rickshaws <clears throat> these auto rickshaws are different from the ones that we have seen earlier the earlier ones had problems of uh, breaking its spokes lift off as well as some uh, instabilities but a small scale industry in hyderabad has engineered a body got it approved and started manufacturing earlier to 2016 <coughs> their more uh, into sales has like they sell it in uh, uh, uk uh, and uk and uh, some western countries their main target is uk they are doing very well i'll just go for a tour of it like this is the 
photograph of uh, the vehicles as well as uh, the factory. It's a shed like uh, structure, small one, but they are able to do many kinds of auto rickshaws, many models of auto rickshaws. The logo. <coughs>
Yes. Any uh, any questions? Sir, this yes. is Surya. Yes. Uh, sir, we have some questions in uh, Zoom group chat also because yeah. uh, few participants uh, they have asked queries uh, in the in I mean yeah. at the time of your uh, presentation. Right, right. Sir. So few questions uh, you can. Please, please yes, sir. You can check, sir. Yeah, please go ahead with questions. Sir, uh, one faculty, Shashank Tiwari, he asked, what is the charging time of e-rickshaw using solar charging station? Six hours. Sir? Six hours, madam. Okay, sir. Thank you. And one more question. Uh, one faculty, Ranjit Kumar. Sir, what is the difference between trickle charging and pulse charging? Trickle charging uh, is, uh, uh, if it's a 12 volt battery, you are charging it with 13.5 uh, volts. So it charges with nominal current so that the discharge path, uh, self-discharge path of the battery is uh, countered using a charger. Pulse charger is, uh, uh, you give pulses of heavy current for short period. Okay, sir. Is it clear? Is it clear, madam? Okay, sir. Yeah. Uh, one more, sir, uh, from Guru. Yeah. Um, good morning, sir. I would like to do research on power electronic converters using, uh, no. I mean, in HV actually. Please let me know that whether battery side or motor side should I focus. Uh, is it triple E candidate, madam? Yes, sir. He is. He wants to do research on power electronic converters in oh, EV electric, electric vehicles. Electric vehicles. So, mm -hmm. if he works on uh, motor side, motor driving, he is good. Okay. And uh, one more, sir. Can yes. we look for IOT for the smart factory options? IOT, 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 IOT for the smart factory options. Smart factory options. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, obvious, obvious it can be done because when during manufacturing uh, of uh, anything, not only electric vehicles or anything IoT is applicable. You can monitor, you can control. Okay, sir. And one more, sir. Uh, please let me know what type of PEC configuration and battery technology is used. PEC uh, technology. Yes, sir. What is TEC? P E C P. T. Mm, P P for uh, parrot. P. P E C. Mm. Can you explain, madam? P E C. I don't know, sir. They have written. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just reading out their questions. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, I think uh, all electronic uh, control systems. Okay. okay. Maybe. See, generally we use uh, high frequency high frequency switching devices. So relatedly high frequency operated uh, embedded systems is required. Am I, am I, am I uh, uh, coming near to the question? Am I, I'm not very sure. Please go again uh, with the question, madam. Please let me know what type of PEC configuration and battery technology is used. This is the usually, question, sir. Usually battery these days it is uh, it is uh, lithium ion batteries and uh, pec for it is each battery monitoring and uh, monitoring while charging as well as discharging so logically you can say each battery that is uh, 3.7 volts battery set battery uh, is available each battery is monitored while charging as well as discharging uh, point here is while charging each and every battery configured in in uh, in parallel mode or series mode, they should be able to deliver common current uh, to the sum of the current which is delivered to the load. So, uh, so if if you can monitor all these things, your PEC is perfect. 
Yeah, PEC is a power electronic converter, sir. Yeah, yeah, power electronic yeah. converter. Yeah. Yeah. Sir, can we use multiple phase, multi-phase induction motors in EVs? One more question. No, no, induction motor is not at all suggestible because it consumes heavy loss. It 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 uh, consumes heavy energy to uh, for for its own survival. So so induction motor is out of question. Okay, sir. Still, any more queries from uh, participants? Please type your queries. You can type or you can uh, speak to me. Yeah, one more, sir, from Doctor R A Patel. Hmm. What are the major faults in motors of electric vehicles? Major faults. Hmm. Generally, shaft bend is the major problem that uh, we are facing till date. Shaft bending shaft. during okay. transportation. Shaft bends. So that is the problem we are facing. But normally, uh, any other damage or any other problem, it's not existing. Manufacturing defects, almost zero. Okay, sir. So we have completed our uh, queries, sir. Thank you for answering them. So a very good morning to everyone present here. I hope you all had a very informative session. On behalf of Uh, sir one more question we got <laughs> yes please can we use switched reluctance motor for evs switched reluctance yes it can be used but the motors are not available as on today okay sir. means means small motors are available but uh, you know to drive a four wheeler it's not uh, it's not uh, available as on today when it comes to two wheeler uh need is uh, the hub motor hub motor switch reluctance is not possible okay sir one more sir yeah. for improving starting torque can we go slip can we go for slip ring induction motor oh oh induction motor itself is not accepted madam okay sir one more sir what is the average mileage of ev auto It is sixty to eighty kilometers, madam. Sixty to eighty. Okay. Sixty to eighty with the forty-eight uh, volts, one eighty AH battery. Okay. Yes, sir. Any queries? But that depends on the load also. Okay, sir. Yes, shall we conclude, sir? Everyone, yes, sir. participants. Uh, one more query, sir. What yes. type of is preferable only BLDC? I didn't What? understand the question, yes, sir. Understand, What type of is preferable? Acha. Why people more prefer more prefer BLDC motor? Okay, okay. Uh, first point is BLDC motor. Since there are permanent magnets. half of the energy required to run the motor is in the static condition permanent uh, condition so extra uh, comparatively if uh, we take induction motor uh, the the field coil consumes some energy and uh, armature coil consumes some energy here field coil is uh, permanent magnet so 50% of energy is Same. Second thing, there are no brush in the in this uh, motor. It is a three-phase motor without brush. It's a three-phase motor, but uh, with permanent magnets. So it is, it is since it's a combination of uh, induction as well as permanent magnet, it is able to perform hundred uh, percent better with respect to its power consumption. Uh, I mean, with respect to induction motor. and uh, with respect to dc motor it is without the wear and tear of uh, brushes it is able to perform so it has it is a disguise of uh, uh, induction as well as dc motor permanent magnet dc motor obviously the efficiency has increased and durability is more okay sir thank you one more question on permanent magnet synchronous motor sir is pmsm is good or not for evs not at all okay. not at all because wear and tear is there 
one more question sir bldc only fitted this huh? i mean are we using only bldc it seems sir bldc yeah let me know did you use bidirectional converter in auto rickshaw it is obviously bidirectional because it requires uh, reverse also okay sir for two wheelers also it is bidirectional but we we do not use it one more sir how to benefit of ev compared to petroleum based engine like efficiency of engine efficiency part as as per uh when battery is healthy it is definitely efficient compared to uh, compared to petrol vehicle but once battery is dead after few years when you replace the battery it consumes the same fuel cost so it is almost the same it's nearly same if you, Say, 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 if you use the use the vehicle daily and uh, uh, consume its uh, full run daily, maybe fifty, sixty kilometers, then it is a benefit. One more, sir. Thank you. What is the problem when we use multi-phase induction motor for EV? Multi? No, see. if it is a uh, normal three phase induction motor itself is not acceptable because it consumes extra energy to sustain itself so multi phase is out of question obviously our multi phase will cost higher so it it cannot be accommodated okay so thank you what type of converter is used in motor side and battery side too in to in motor side that is uh, between battery and uh, motor bldc motor it's a three phase uh, driver having a feedback from the coils that is uh, coils of uh, motor so uh, it's an you can say it's a three phase motor with feedback okay sir thank you can we use bug boost converter in battery or we have to use bidirectional bug boost converter bug boost is not at all required not at all required okay. bidirectional in the controller itself uh, there can be there can be bidirectional and that is required only for three wheelers and four wheelers not for two wheelers okay sir can we use cage type can we use cage type cage type is also nearly induction motor induction motor no it is not acceptable okay sir. one more question sir any regeneration is possible in these motors yes regenerative braking system uh, is uh, uh, used in uh, three wheelers as well as four wheelers Uh, but uh, the one that one uh, video that you have seen that is uh, rap motors vehicle that doesn't use uh, regenerative braking okay, one more sir in the recent vehicles that that is uh, tata uh, hyundai uh, uh, i mean the mahindras they are using regenerative braking but uh, uh, not that effectively thank you can we use normal dc motor for ev yes we can but uh, with the problems that uh, if you are ready for uh, brush wear out it's fine we can use yes, one more sir bldc controller used is sensor or sensorless it is sensor okay that's what is the sensor type itself is called feedback type of uh, controller and motor one more question sir what is the difference between electrical vehicle and hybrid electrical vehicle electric vehicle is uh, uh, straight that is battery motor and controller uh, to drive the wheels whereas uh, hybrid electric vehicle is 
it is it is on petrol engine or diesel engine driving the wheels and uh, there is motor to assist or couple along with the uh, engine it's a parallel drive or series drive thank you sir what is the lifetime of battery how many types of batteries used in ev earlier it was a gel type of batteries which is almost equal to lead acid battery and uh, present days in auto rickshaw that you have seen in the video is also lead acid lead acid battery but the recent vehicles which are coming uh, through these big big companies hyundai tata and mahindra these are uh, uh, lithium ion batteries okay sir sir ev engine maintenance cost high compared to diesel ev doesn't have engine it's only a motor so no maintenance cost at all okay sir what type of converter is used one more question sir three phase feedback controller one more question sir if induction motor uh, out of questions due to losses ah. then why Mah then why mahindra uses im in ev uh, mahindra used once upon a time now it is not using during those days uh, bldc was not there was not developed it was just talked about but uh, not developed uh, because of that they used during during those days but uh, after after i think uh, 2008 onwards no 2010 onwards they have started using uh, bldc one more sir where to focus on ev for doing research as electrical engineer Where's i mean which which topic yeah, it which seems topic. yeah it seems which topic okay see on uh, motor driving is one thing and uh, sometimes uh, if you are concentrating on uh, uh, battery battery system then uh, charging uh, charging discharging of uh, battery cells can be concentrated which requires electrical engineer as well as embedded engineer in that thing yes, validity of electrical vehicle ah uh, i didn't get it madam validity of electrical vehicle validity hmm. validity is uh, see it is already approved by arei automotive research association of india has approved for uh, uh, manufacturing of these vehicles so i think uh, no separate validity is required one more sir power and torque generates by hybrid system in ev hmm. will match with commercial vehicle yes definitely mark. yes definitely it can be matched especially this can be used for heavy heavy vehicles like uh, uh, tata trucks the leyland trucks their hev works very well thank you sir any more queries from the participants how many load carry at a time um, <laughs> yeah can you go again madam sir they have written it as uh, how many load carry at a time i mean okay. how much weight they carry at a time it seems right right <laughs> let me let me let me, uh, me describe if it is a 600 watt motor it can carry up to 105 kg okay. uh if it is uh, 1000 watt it can carry up to 1200 kg then uh, if it is of uh, uh 6000 watt it can carry up to almost uh, um, uh 1000 i mean uh, 1500 to uh 2000 kg as well as some people in it okay what is what about fault tolerance in bldc motor fault tolerance fault tolerance fault tolerance is while operating or if it is operating condition fault tolerance is 
managed by the controller itself because of its sensors uh, for the rotation. Fault tolerance for manufacturing of uh, DLDC motor is, you know, its alignment with the uh, its alignment with the, you know, the lobes, the metal lobes which has the core. It's it's all in the alignment. One more question, sir. Uh, as inverter is a DC to AC conversion, is it applicable to electrical vehicle? Then what is the supply of electrical vehicle? It is generally 48 volts. Okay. 48 volts battery. Some are going with uh, 72 volts battery. It depends on the size of the vehicle. If, if the vehicle capacity increases, the voltage increases. Yes, sir. One more question. Yeah. EV have more torque, more than petrol or diesel vehicle, and how it is? No, no, that is reverse. Petrol vehicle has much higher torque compared to EVs. Okay, sir. Thank you. How long will a lithium ion battery last in commercial vehicle usage? Commercial or any, any purpose, uh, life of battery depends on its chemistry. So, so it, it hardly, if, we, if it is a lithium type, then it is uh, hardly five to six years. Okay, sir. One more, sir. Which type of braking is used in electric vehicle? Uh, friction braking as well as, uh, yeah. friction braking is must and uh, uh, regenerative braking is applied in few vehicles, not all the vehicles. Say in two wheelers, it's not affordable, they don't use it. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah. Any more queries from the participants? Okay, sir. Yeah. No more questions. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Right, um, a very good morning to everyone present here. I hope you all had a very informative session. On behalf of the Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering, Gates Institute of Technology, and the audience, I, Syed Suraya, HOD, deem it a great honor and privilege to thank speaker Shri P. Chauredigaru for all the valuable information on history of electrical vehicles and his personal practical experiences he shared with us this present time. I hope all the participants, I mean, uh, who are uh, watching this uh, FDB live, they have got uh, research, they have got uh, ideas for their research. I mean, they have got a direction about the, I mean, the, the, by the proposals mentioned by Dr. Uh, uh, Mr. Chaureddy and uh, we'll uh, sure implement it. And I thank all the participants who have given their valuable time to attend the session. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. We had an informa uh, informative session, sir. Thank you. thank you for giving your valuable time and sharing your practical experiences and uh, knowledge with us. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Thank you, sir.